Hi ladies and gents, Pond here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Thank you so much for your previous likes, comments and subscriptions to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, why not click on that button and ring the bell so you can get notifications of whenever I'm dropping videos on the channel, which is daily. And now on to the topic of this video, and this is my guide to HP. So what is HP? Well, let's have a look into a battle video first. And if you go to a specific unit attributes section you can see the heart symbol here this is your hp rating now basically hp is your troops health it's going to determine um, how many hits they will take before they die how much damage they can take so the higher the hp rating the more damage they can take before they're going to die pretty simple right but also HP is very critical in terms of its value. So if you look at, say, just comparing on this battle report, my attack power, my might is way up in the 450% area and my resistance is close to 400. So for HP, every single individual value is going to really count towards the strength of your troops. So um, it is very, very important. I would say it's probably the most important attribute out of all of these attributes in, in your um, unit attributes. So first off, you can if you click on the bar as usual, it's going to show you the breakdown of where you're getting that HP from. So in this particular battle, you can see that I had 125.2%. Now, Really, when you consider all different factors, the the highest amount of HP you're probably going to see in battle reports currently is approximately 150%. Not an exact science, but it will be the top players will be running with close to 150% HP. And it will be broken down, obtained from these five different areas. So we have first off class, then equipment, heroes technology and VIP. So I'm gonna show you where you can obtain each of these different sections of HP. So first off, we're gonna look at class. So class, I have touched on this in some recent videos. If you are a raider, you can obtain HP through your class manual. And it's quite far down if uh, towards the bottom of the manual, unfortunately. And first off, we're gonna look at this section here. So Professional Army 1, Strict Rules 1, Heavy Modification 1. Each of these are for the specific troop type. So Heavy Modification is for Cavalry, Strict Rules for Archers, and Professional Army is for Footmen. Each of these will give you plus 5% HP for the individual troop type. And of course, you do need to go into your card use section and allocate a slot for it. So you can see I've got Heavy, heavy Modification Class HP Cavalry HP plus five in use there. So that is that is gonna get you 5% there. Also in the class manual, again, I have done a separate video on this uh, recently, which is to do with class representation. So this barricade position card is a, is a alliance card, and this can give an increase for, of HP for all troops by up to 3%. So you will need to, again, activate this card once you reach it, and it is right at the bottom of the class menu. I think you do have to have be up to level 120 to be able to reach this. Uh, you have to skip some a lot of other slots, but probably 120 is the minimum. And you'll need to put this either in then your alliance position or in the general position for your card use. And then you'll need to be going over to your alliance menu, represent, and you will have to be one of the five players in these positions. Depending on which position you're in gives you a different level of buff. So the command gets it gives 120% buff on that on that 3%. So they actually give 3.6% um, increase. And the maximum amount that you can get from your representation is 9% for or from all five. So in a, in our alliance at right now, we've got it at 7.2%. We're just waiting for the two councillors to reach a high enough level. There are just a couple of levels away. And then we'll be getting another um, boost from those as well because it will be 30% of the of the benefit, which is um, is just up, it's 0.9% each. So it's a total of 9%. So the maximum you can get from your class for HP boost is 14%. Next up, we have gear. So as you can see, there is different uh, different gear sets are going to give different boosts. So for cap for steel cavalry, 
actually you only get the one boost which is from the weapon and it's going to give you an extra 20% HP. So you're getting you can get 20% HP from your steel cavalry gear. All you'll notice every weapon item in each gear set is going to give HP and then some other helmets also give HP. So if we look at then Wanderer and Dreadnought, these are giving the same amounts plus 15% HP from the weapon and the helmet. So you're getting plus 30% extra HP on your um, on your footman and your archer gears. So there we go, Dreadnought Sable plus 15% and Dreadnought's Crown plus 15%. So those are a slight increase in what you can get from Steel Cavalry, but there is a reason for that and we'll talk about that in a minute. Next up is Dragon Gear, and again with Dragon Gear, you are going to get a plus 20% from the weapon and from the helmet, so an extra 40% boost. So obviously this is, for instance, if, you're work, if you've got cavalry, that's going to give you an extra 20 HP, uh, which is a considerable amount. That's probably 15% 15, 15 of your overall total HP. So just one more reason to get Dragon Master gear, guys, it is really key. And then actually the two gear types that give the best boost are the Tyrant and Immortal gears. Both of their weapons give an extra 45% HP. So um, on the Tyrant gear, that's going to give your footman an extra 45%. And on the Immortal, that's giving your archers an extra 45%. So that is actually um, the largest amount of HP boost you could get from any gear type. Next up, we have heroes. Of course we do. So uh, you would have seen in my hero guides, I have referenced a lot of the time that you they are giving extra HP from their sixth skill. So all of the heroes on this sheet are giving extra HP from their sixth skill. First off, we have Rough Rider who will give you an extra 7% HP from his sixth skill. And then we have all of these other heroes that are going to give you plus 15% HP. And these nearly all of these heroes are generally, you're gonna to wanna to put them in that front row. Don't forget your front row is what takes the most attacks, the most damage, because that's where nearly all of the basic attacks are always going to be targeting. So having your hero, having the hero that gives your troops the best HP boost is usually a good tactic. And you can see that in all seasons of the game, you're going to be able to acquire a hero that has extra HP. So in S1, it's Chung Mu Gong, and who is a footman hero, and Cincinnatus, who is an archer hero. In S2, it's just Peace Bringer for footmen, and in S3, it's just Bleeding Steed for footmen again. In S4, this is quite unique. There are actually three heroes that have the plus 15 HP. Desert Storm for footmen, Immortal Guardian for archers, Soaring Hawk for footmen. Desert Storm's an interesting one. You would generally put him on the back row. Uh, he is the only back row hero that actually has uh, the HP boost. So he's a bit of a unique one. And potentially, if you were running with uh, Desert Storm, Breeding Steed, and Immortal Guardian, then obviously you can, uh, sorry, and Soaring Hawk, then all of the troops in that legion would be benefiting from a 15% HP boost. So most people, a lot of people, when they get to S4, they're gonna run that Soaring Hawk, Bleeding Steed, Desert Storm combination. Um, and that is really, really hard to break down. Then for in SX1, we've got the Hunk. Uh, again, Footman Hero, Dach, Tangri in SX2, Footman Hero again. Uh, then we've got the Defender in SX3, who is an Archer Hero. Skander in SX4, who is a Footman Hero. And Liberator in SX5, who is, yes, you guessed it, an A Footman Hero. So you can see that actually uh, there are no cavalry heroes that are giving you a HP boost. And again, we're going to find out the reason for that in a minute. Last two heroes, North Rage and Orochi. They are the HP specialists in the game. First off, let's just have a look at one of them. Uh, I've, I've, uh, who is in? There we go, Orochi. So his sixth skill, you're getting plus 7% HP. So that's the same as Rough Rider's sixth skill. Rough Rider also gives 7% uh, HP, and it's the same for North uh, North Rage as well. He gives plus 7%. But with Orochi and with North Rage, they, have, they are the only two heroes in the game that have the hardened seventh skill. And what this is do doing is giving an extra 15% HP to all squads in their legion. So if you have 
uh, Orochi in your formation, then he's giving himself an extra 22% HP, and he's giving the other two squads an extra 15%. So if you actually had a, a, legion, a, a formation that had, say, North Rage and Orochi in it, plus any of these other hero S, um, S heroes, then the, the squad that the S hero is leading would actually be gaining 45 HP. 15 from the hero's 6th skill, 15 from North Rage's 7th skill, 15 from Orochi's 7th skill. So 45 HP is actually the highest boost you can get from heroes in the game. And um, yeah, North Rage and Orochi, that is why they are so good early on. If you you could have a very strong defensive legion if you were placing both of them in your uh, in your squads uh, in your formation. So um, those are the HP boosts that you're going to see from heroes, and that's why often you're going to see different amounts depending on who you have formed from the hero boost, depending on who is in your formation. So that's heroes. Then we have research. So if we go back to that battle report, not events, here we go. So if we go back to that battle report, you'll see that I was getting 15% HP. That is because I have a rock sheet on my middle row. So there's that, uh, there's the front row is getting 15%, a rock sheet's row gets 22%. The back row gets 15% for, for the hero. Now, technology is where you're going to get the most boost for uh, your HP. And I'm actually getting 75% on this cavalry formation. And I'm actually getting this from uh, several different sections. So first off, you can see I'm showing full metal jacket. So if we go to research in the Institute, and initially in... Um, basic military so very early on in the game we have the full metal jacket uh, research ability and this is going to give you an extra 15% increased uh, HP on all your units so full metal jacket is the first element of research that you can do that will give you extra HP next up we have zone conflict so in zone conflict we have this section here Defenders of the Peace and Campaign Toughness. As usual, the left-hand side relates to you battling in Clash of Province in your own state. The right-hand side, Campaign Toughness, uh, is implies when you're attacking in another state. So Defenders of the Peace will increase troop health within your own province during Clash of Province by 10%. And then Campaign Toughness in increase troop HP within the enemy's province. So once you've got these both max, basically, effectively, you're giving yourself an extra 10% HP boost all the time, except for that one day on the Monday of warm up week where we are not in Clash of Province. That is the one day where that will not be in effect. So that is where you can get another 10%. Cavalry. So you would, as I've mentioned before, there are no cavalry S heroes that give extra HP, and there are no, uh, and you only get that uh, reduced extra 20% HP from the cavalry gear which is 10 less than the other two troop types. But this is balanced out in the cavalry training because Ebony Barding gives an extra 30% HP to your cavalry. So it's a huge, huge boost for your cavalry, guys. So out of that 75%, I'm getting 30 from here, 10 from the... Uh, 10 from the zone conflict boost and 15% from my full metal jacket boost in the basic military. There are a couple of other areas then. So the last area in terms of that 75% is in master warfare. And right at the bottom of master warfare, unfortunately, guys, it literally is the penultimate section. You will have these, seal, these three sections, siege shield, siege armor, siege cavalry. Each one of these is for the specific troop type. So Siege Shield is for footmen, Siege Armor for archers, and Siege Cavalry is for, of course, cavalry. And these are going to increase your HP by up to 20%. So a really, really good boost here again. And um, as far as I'm aware, this is just for in all situations. I know it says the word Siege, but when you read the description, it just says increased cavalry HP. 
So um, these are going to give you, once you've completed them, an extra 20% HP for all of your troop types. So finishing, again, just another reason why Master Warfare is really, really important. And then there is one other section of research which gives you extra HP, and it's for a very specific area. So in Master City Defense, once you've unlocked Stand United, which is your defensive fifth legion, there is this section here, Legion Enhancement. You can see it's got a heart in the castle, and this actually increases the defensive Q unit HP by 15%. So again, this is why defensive Qs, there are a couple of reasons why defensive Qs are actually the strongest legions. Um, if you put obviously the best gear with them and your best heroes, they'll have this 15% extra HP boost, plus they'll have the extra troop count. Uh, they do have more troops in the defensive legion. So this is the other research area in Master City Defense where you can increase HP, but this is just for that fifth defensive queue. It will not impact on your other four legions. So that is everything to do with HP with research. And there is just that one final section on that report, which was the VIP shop. So for those um, those of us lucky enough to have unlocked the VIP shop, um, this is going to allow you to get a small extra boost. And basically on each level, there is the plus 1% HP boost for footmen, archers, and cavalry. So each level, you can gain 1%. And currently, we have five levels in the in the VIP shop. So if someone is lucky enough to have um, unlocked all five levels, then they can gain an extra 5% HP boost for all three troop types from there. So that is HP, guys. That is everything I know about it. Like I say, um, there's a lot to work on, and you do have to go quite deep into the game to benefit from all of those maximum amounts of HP. Um, yes, okay, you can obviously, if you're a big spender, you're going to benefit from having Dragon Master gear and a few extra percent from um, the VIP shop as well. But other than that, if you're just using, if you're smart guys and you're uh, obviously just working hard, working through your um, researches, that is where you're going to get a big bulk of your HP. And obviously, if you're running like footmen legions like i've said um that have multiple heroes with that hp boost that's going to be strong solid defensive legions as well so um i hope you found this video helpful if you have then please do click on that like and if you have any comments or questions about hp i'd love to hear them uh who has seen what's the highest hp figure you guys have seen like i say i i haven't sat down and worked out the exact highest figure that um, is obtainable, um, but I'm pretty sure it's a it's around the 150, 155% region, I would think. And um, obviously, I think if players are running with that high HP, then it's going to be really difficult to uh, to defeat their legions. Um, if you could please share this this video and my channel in your own lunch chat, province chat, and through Lime WhatsApp, Viber, Discord, whatever you use to communicate with your fellow players in the game, that would be very much appreciated. That's everything for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.